Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and this is part two of a series where we are learning how to calculate how much thermal energy a substance will either release or absorb as it changes from one state to another. So let's just jump right in and work on a couple of examples. In this example here, it says how much thermal energy must 250 grams of water at 98 degrees Celsius release in order to turn into ice at 25 degrees Celsius. So when we have these types of problems where we're asked to calculate uh, a substance's change in thermal energy uh, when there is also a change in state of matter, what I like to do is draw a picture of what's happening here. So in this problem here, it tells you that you've got 250 grams of water and this water is at 98 degrees Celsius and what's going to happen to this water if we take a look is that over time it's going to turn into ice alright so this water is going to turn into ice its mass is going to stay the same However, its temperature is going to drop to negative 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, So we've got some water, it's cooling down, it's turning into ice at negative 25 degrees Celsius. And what we're being asked to calculate is how much thermal energy, how much thermal energy will this water need to release in order to convert it into ice at negative 25 degrees. So as this water here cools down, there will be a point that this water is going to freeze. And for water, we know that that happens at zero degrees Celsius. So right here at zero degrees Celsius, this water here is going to freeze. And turn into ice. Okay. So everything over here is a liquid or water. Everything over here is a solid or in this case it's ice and what we need to do is find out how much thermal energy this water is going to have to release to cool down its temperature to zero to freeze and then continue to cool down to negative 25 degrees Celsius and in order to do this problem we have to set up three different mini problems the first thing that we will need to do is that we will need to use Q equals CM delta T to figure out how much thermal energy this water here will need to release to bring its temperature from 98 to 0. Once we're done doing that in step 2, what we will need to do is calculate the heat of fusion for this water. That is the amount of energy required to convert the water into ice. And then in step 3 here, what we're going to have to do is use Q equals CM delta T again to figure out how much thermal energy this ice is going to have to release to go from 0 to negative 25. So let's jump in and solve this problem. Alright, so here we go. Step 1. What we need to do is figure out how much thermal energy the water is going to have to release to go from 98 to 0 degrees. And the way we do that is by using the C equals M delta T formula. Okay. So right now we're talking about water here that's in the liquid stage and the specific heat of water we know is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. The mass of this water is 250 grams and the change in its temperature as it goes from 98 to 0 will end up being a negative 98 degrees Celsius. Since it's cooling down our temperature change here should be negative. I put this in my calculator and I end up with negative 102,410 joules. So in order for this water at 98 degrees Celsius to cool down to 0 degrees Celsius, it's going to have to release this much energy right here. Now we need to calculate in step 2 we need to calculate the heat of fusion. So to get the heat of fusion, we take the mass of this water here. The mass of this water is 250 grams times the heat of fusion for water. The heat of fusion for water is 334 joules per gram, as explained in a, uh, a video uh, earlier to this one. 
Okay, put this in my calculator, but before we do, the sign of this should be negative since the water is cooling off and freezing. The sign of your uh, heat diffusion should be negative, and we should end up with negative 83,500 joules. So this is the amount of energy it's going to take to just freeze the water. And in our last step, we need to figure out how much thermal energy this ice is going to have to release to go from 0 to negative 25. So step 3 here. We're going to have to use Q equals CM delta T again. The specific heat this time is of ice. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.03 joules per gram degree Celsius times the mass of the ice is still the same, 250 grams, times the change in temperature as it goes from 0 degrees to negative 25. That will be a negative 25 degrees Celsius. Put this in my calculator and I end up with negative 12,000. 687.5 so now that we figured out how much thermal energy the water is going to have to release in order to go from 98 to 0 and now that we figured out the heat of fusion the amount of energy it will take to freeze the water and finally now that we figured out the amount of thermal energy this ice is going to have to release when it goes from 0 to negative 25 all we're going to have to do here to figure out the total amount of energy that the water will need to release as it goes from 98 to negative 25 is simply add these three numbers up. If I add these three numbers up, I should end up with my grand total. And the grand total, if I add these three numbers up, should be 198,597.5. And if you want, you can convert this into uh, kilojoules quite simply by moving this decimal three times to the left and we'll end up with 198.6, whoops, negative 198.6 kilojoules, negative Kilojoules. So to answer our question, how much thermal energy must this water release in order to go from 98 degrees Celsius to negative 25, it's going to have to release 198.6 kilojoules or negative 198,597.5 joules. Let's look at another problem. Okay, in this problem it says, how much thermal energy must 100 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius absorb to go to water vapor at 200 degrees Celsius? So once again, we're dealing with the problem where we're asked to calculate how much thermal energy a substance is releasing or absorbing when there's a, t uh, when there's a phase change in that substance. So as usual, what I like to do is I like to make a little picture here of what's happening. So in this problem, we've got 100 grams of water. one hundred grams of water and the temperature of this water is forty five degrees celsius and this water over time is going to absorb some thermal energy and turn into water vapor Okay, the mass of this water vapor is going to stay the same but the temperature of this water vapor here is going to increase or I'm sorry the temperature of the water is going to increase eventually turn into water vapor and then that water vapor is going to continue to heat up to 200 degrees Celsius and we want to figure out how much thermal energy this water here will need to absorb so we're asked to calculate how much thermal energy this water here will need to absorb in order to raise its temperature to 200 degrees Celsius. So as this water heats up, there's going to become a point where that water is going to boil or evaporate. And that should happen right around here. 
right at 100 degrees Celsius, this water is going to begin to boil. That is the boiling point of water. Okay? It's going to continue to heat up, and that water vapor is going to absorb more thermal energy until it reaches a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. All right, so we've got water right here, and we've got water vapor over here. And what we're being asked to find is how much thermal energy this water is going to have to absorb. So we have to set up, once again, three different problems. We'll have to find the amount of thermal energy this water here is going to need to absorb as it goes from 45 to 100. We'll do that in the first step. And the second step, we're going to have to find the heat of vaporization. That's the amount of energy it takes to convert this water to water vapor. And in the third and final step, what we will do is calculate the amount of thermal energy this water vapor will need to absorb to go from 100 to 200 using the Q equals CM delta T formula. Once we have these three answers, all we need to do is add them up. So let's start with step one. In step one, we're going to calculate how much thermal energy this water will need to absorb as it goes from 45 to 100 degrees, which is the boiling point of water. We know that the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times the mass of the water which is 100 grams times the change in temperature as it goes from 45 to 100 that's 55 degrees Celsius put this in our calculator and we will end up with 22,990 joules this will be positive 22,990 joules since the water is absorbing thermal energy. All right, so in step two, what we're going to do is now calculate the heat of vaporization. To get the heat of vaporization, I take the mass of the water, which is 100 grams, and I multiply it by the heat of vaporization. And you can get the heat of vaporization from a textbook or from Google or you can simply memorize it. The heat of vaporization for water is 2,260 joules per gram. And this will be a positive 2,260 since the water is absorbing thermal energy and turning into water vapor. Put this in our calculator and we will end up with 226,000. Joules. So there's the amount of energy this water is going to need to convert to water vapor. In our third step, we need to figure out how much thermal energy the uh, water vapor is going to absorb as it goes from 100 to 200. And we will do that using the Q equals CM delta T formula, where the specific heat of water vapor is 2.0 joules per gram degree Celsius times the mass of the water which does not change 100 grams times the change in its temperature as it goes from 100 to 200 a temperature change of 100 degrees Celsius put this in our calculator and we will end up with 20,000 joules so now that we have all these values the amount of thermal energy it takes for this water to go from 45 to 0 the amount of uh, energy it takes to convert this water to water vapor and the amount of energy that this water vapor it will absorb to go from 100 to 200 degrees Celsius all we now need to do is add up these three values and we should get our answers so we'll take the 22,990 plus the 226,000 plus the 20,000 joules of energy and we will get our final answer of 268,990 joules once again 
Our answer should be positive since the water is absorbing thermal energy. And if you want to convert this to kilojoules, slide this decimal over three times and you'll have your answer. 269 kilojoules. So, how much thermal energy must this water here absorb in order to go from 45 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius? It will absorb 269 kilojoules of thermal energy. I hope you found this helpful.